Guess what? We have another guest video, fantastic store tour, or should I say a shop tour, because we are in Scotland. If you're heading up from Glasgow to Fort William, halfway along the way, along the road, the A82, you get to the Green Welly stop, which is this little shopping centre, but Tindrum Whiskey is based here and it has a fantastic selection. They have a website as well, so feel free to go online and check them out. Oh, all the expensive ones are behind the, <laughs> the desk, but we can have a look. Now, I've slowed the video down so that we can really have a, a look. So put up with the little stutters. Cladac, £160. Oh, that's pretty expensive. I think I bought it cheaper than that. Got some compass boxes. Delilah. What about the prices? Now, it is quite a touristy area um, and it is a bit of a captured audience, so the prices may not be the best. <laughs> you tell us. 109 for a Invergordon. Are these all single grains? I guess we are in the single grain section, aren't we? Yeah, looks like it. North British, Port Dundas. Dundas, is it? The Strathclyde. There's some old ones, though. Like, is that a 40 year for 420 pounds? Yeah, maybe. OK, more standard fare. Aberfeldy 16 for 63 pounds. Now, for dollars, you have to go 1.4 on that. So uh, plus a bit extra for the extra 50 mil that we generally get in the US. Although that is changing. I've started to see the 700 mil bottles show up. So. But let's call it one and a half times whatever the number you see. So Anoc 12, 27 pounds. So you're talking about $40, something like that. See some Ardbegs in the background. I'm not going to try and pronounce the Bonahavens. Vegan, James Eady. So many independent bottlers. Oh, single malts of Scotland. Which one is it? That's a Colila for 58, I think it is. Yeah, it looks like a couple of Colila's there. Colila 12, coming in at £50, $75-ish. Oh no. Erin Nagrenya, I think. I don't know what the other one is there. <laughs> oh, an Octave Bunnehaven, £61, so about 90 ish for that one. Oh, that looks like a hand-fill Bunnehaven that you get when you go to the distillery. That's funny. Aaron 21. Oh, the video has gone smoother. Well, that's good. Aaron 21. 99 pounds, so about $150 for Aaron 21. That is definitely a, a good price. Oh, look at that mini Bal Blair 15. <laughs> nice. I guess they sell quite a few of those for tourists passing passing by. Oh, look, pronounced Stewardair. I think it said. <laughs> Glendronic 15. We see the price, the revival, £65. Well, I see that in the US for about $75, $80. So that is more expensive. Glencadam 18. Isn't that one uh, out of production now? I don't think I've seen the 18 in the US. Let's see, how much is the 10 year? It's going to remain a mystery. <laughs> no, there it is. £38. For the 10 year. Again, I think we get that a little cheaper here in the US, but again, these might be more tourist prices. We don't get Carnmore in the US. We don't get the Berry Brothers. Uh, maybe I have seen Berry Brothers in Total Wine on occasion. Whole selection of Glenallachie 12. So I see French Oak, Chinquapin. Was that the tequila one or something? Anyway. Game of Thrones, <laughs> still hanging out there, isn't it? Still going. They're actually getting pretty cheap on clearance, I've noticed. How much is Lefroy over there? Lore. Mm, a little hard to see it. I think that's 89 or 99, maybe. Yeah, we really don't see flora and fauna over in the US either. Infrequent flyers. 
What's that? More things I don't know. Okay, what's the price on tomatoes? Oh yeah, of course, Kuboken is tomatin as well, isn't it? Well, we really did like our tomatin 18-year-old recently, and that uh, is still selling over here for around $90. Some more flora and fauna to mimic? No. Yes? And tamnavolins. Always a little on the cheap side, tamnavolin also. Ardmore! A whole bunch of Aaron's probably finishes. Ah, oh, Kriegeliki 13. My whiskey of the year last year. That's such a great bottle for the price. And I don't have any left. Of course, I can always do something about that if I need to, can't I? Glen Glasser. I've had the Evolution. No, yes. And I did like it, but it was a while ago now. £60 for Glen Farkless 15. Now, the 15 is, again, one of those bottles that doesn't make it to the US. For whatever reason. Standard long row peated, 42. It's about 65 here, so that would be somewhat similar. Um, yeah. Just looking, straining a little bit to see the prices there. Didn't quite catch them. Wow, so many different a Thrusk, Altmore, Altmore. I'm just looking at all the independents. Gordon MacPhail, Bob Blair. Ah, oh, Old Malt Cask. Now, it seems like in the UK, Old Malt Cask is always 50% ABV, but in the US, we seem to have a range. It's come up a couple of times, but I don't know. Tell me if you've seen Old Malt Cask not at 50% ABV in the UK. 79 for Deanston 18. That's the old bottle. That's the one that we have, and we do really like it. I think we paid 110 to 115 US here, so something similar. And the classic 12 there as well. What's that 10 year? Wine finish. Dal Ewan. <laughs> I looked at the Dalmores, I just thought, what should I say about them? <laughs> We actually still have Dalmore 12 waiting to show up in our blind bottle somewhere. <laughs> Not enough hands. Yes, a very well placed uh, little sticker there on the shelf. It's often the case, isn't it? Now, all Pulteney 12, we also share the exact same 40% bottle in the US now. We used to get the 43, but that is gone about a year ago now. Martin Legacy, great value at £25. I'm guessing it is. Now, no, no taxes on top of these prices in the UK, the way we have to deal with that calculation in the US. You always see the sticker and have to guess 10% or whatever it is on top. Well, there's the Malaga cask finish that I was seeing in Total Wine in California. So obviously it's... A fairly standard bottle, I would think, then. A general release. Another Flora and Fauna. Glen Lossy. I did really like the 19-year-old Glen Lossy that we have. Which is an uh, independent bottle as well. Alexander Murray. Probably just ex-bourbon, the one that we have. Don't know much about Glen Kinchy. All particular has treated us well also for uh, independent bottles and we do see quite a lot of those in the US via the local shop store K&L Old Ballantruan we did really like that 15 year old uh, Peated Tom and Terrell is it not? I always kind of get mixed up and forget which one it was Deepa loved the um, the Port Askeg. I'm just looking behind me now to see what it is on the shelf. It was the 200th anniversary edition, which was um, a high proof version. Some kind of Isla combination, I think, isn't it? Or at least maybe the casks are combined. I mean, combined Colila and some Lafroig, maybe.
never had big peat or how, oh actually no i do i think we do have a sample of big peat downstairs some of the new benriacs we still see quite a few of the old benriacs around here that blue one looks like an older bottle there's new benromax also Peat smoke. Oh, they do an organic as well. That's interesting. 51 pounds for the organic. Glengarry. That is a bit of an unusual one. Sort of a slightly Ockentoshian note about it on top of a sort of more Highlandy classic profile. I liked it actually, the 12. Glen Elgin. That's funny. I just saw an almost identical bottle in my Santa Clara video, and I think it was about $110. So that's single malts of Scotland, Glen Elgin. I mean, I'm sure it's a different cask because they are probably single casks. I've had one Finlagen. Um, it was good. Just a cheap one. We tried it at a friend's. Okay, Tom and Towel. Are don't know much about other than um, it's pretty common here in the US see it in total wine all the time Cooper's Choice another independent bottler where are we? oh I see Orkney so we're in Highland Park territory or Scapa but uh, Highland Park is that the new Glen Turret guess it is. I didn't expect that to be the box for the bottle, <laughs> which is more uh, sort of decanter style. A little bit of scapa hiding down there at the bottom. And some more blends, smoky blends. Is Scarab a smoky? Oh, it is the Isla. That is the Isla blend. Yeah, okay. Mm. Don't know what those three are. Isla Journey uh, is a blend, but it's from uh, Ardenho, is it? I mean, it's it's not their whiskey, but it was a blend to do a little bit of branding, I guess, for the new distillery. Some more James Eady. Okay, how much are the Bowmores? Bowmore 18, 92 pounds. It's getting expensive, isn't it? The Laddie. Okay, there's Isle of Barley at 51. So 75 US, I guess with taxes, that's uh, it's about the same. Definitely an early favorite of ours, the Isle of Barley. Oh, MRC01 still on the shelf. PAC01. Oh, I don't know what that is. OLC01, I do know, so. MRC01, £82. That's not a bad price, is it? It's obviously been hanging out for a while now. It's uh, two years old, that one, I think, unless they re-released it. Who knows? It is a classic label, a classic look, isn't it? The flora and fauna. What's that 11-year Glen Scotia? 11-year sherry, a little unusual, or at least I'm not aware of it. Some Glen Morris, another single malts of Scotland. I get excited when I see that box because our favourite whiskey at the moment, our number one position is still the Ben Nevis single malts of Scotland, 23-year-old. A lovely sherry matured, dirty edges on a, from Ben Nevis.
Iliac. Possibly is that Talisker, maybe? I think I read that somewhere. Jura. It's not one we talk about much, is it? Us whiskey nerds. But we have a, a Jura, an independent bottle of Jura, which is an older one. I can't remember what, how old. 23 years old, maybe? And we really like it. 100% Isla from Kilhoman. We're, we have a couple of bottles still waiting to show up in blind tasting. It's been so long that they've been in there. Actually, Hepburn's choice was the independent bottler of our Jura bottle also. A lot of blue <laughs> in the Talisker. How much is the 10? 44 pounds. Maybe slightly. Oh, hold on. There's actually a spring bank on the shelf. Okay, it's just the 10 year old. 45 pounds. Now that has jumped up a lot in price in the US. It's more like $90 now. Um, but that was partly tariff issues. Whether, whether that drops down again. Oh, I see our favorite bourbon, Old Perth. At least the 23 year old was our favorite bourbon in blind tasting. Uh, yes, it is not a bourbon. That was just us getting it wrong again. But it made for a good episode. <laughs> By the way, Red Spot, no, sorry, Red Breast 21 is our second favourite bourbon. <laughs> Got that wrong as well. Clonakilty and the English. I haven't had either of those. Oh, there's Waterford. Oh, could we? It's a shame we can't get in there and have a proper rummage around. What can you spot? I see some signatory bottles, some Glenfarclas family casks, Octomores. Oh, it's too painful. Everyone must just have their face pressed up against the glass. Ah, oh, there you go. Thanks again, Stuart. <laughs> 